What is up guys and girls, it's Will here, or Nerdy on YouTube, and today I'm showing you how to create a database for MySQL, as well as set up a table, and so I'll show you some common uh, column settings for the table as well. So we're just going to click MySQL Database Wizard, which is in the database uh, section of cPanel, and we're just going to do DB name, next step. And we'll just uh, create a username called DB user. And so when we're setting up our connection file, uh, it's going to be gen for underscore DB user. This will be whatever prefix you have for your account on cPanel. So that's going to be different. But you will need to include that um, when you actually set up your database file. Now I'm just going to generate another password here and copy and paste the first one so it's a little bit longer and press use password. There's also some advanced options where I can make it uh, more secure, less secure. So I press use password and I'll do create user. And now I'm going to assign this user to my database I just created called dbname. And I'll do all privileges so that any scripts I create using PHP or another language have full access and can do anything. But if we know that like, for example, you're gonna have a specific connection file, uh, for users on your website to use um, and you don't need them to do certain things we can remove permissions so like if they're never going to drop a table we can uncheck that um, you know if they're never inserting data we can get rid of that so you can really mess around with the permissions to just offer another layer of security um, to make sure that if they do happen to do any SQL injection uh, that there's only so much that the database will accept as a valid command. Now I'll press next step. That's um, also just so like if they did hack into your uh, files somehow and they got the DB connection um, password and things and they were connecting, you know, that security is there. So there's a lot of different reasons to mess around with those settings. Um, anyways, so that's done. So I'll just refresh this page here. And as you can see, our database we just created it has uh, shown up. So we'll click that. Um, you can get to this page on cPanel by going down to databases and clicking PHP My Admin, which is the software um, defaulted on uh, cPanel. And so we'll create a table just called uh, Table New, or we'll say New Table. And uh, we'll set it up with, uh, just do six columns, and I'll show you some basic settings, and uh, we'll finish up the video after that. Um, so the first thing that every table needs is some sort of ID or something to basically distinguish each row. And so for this, we press auto increment, and that means it's gonna start at one, and then the next row will be two, then three, then four, then five, and it's a unique ID. So if you press AI, it will automatically assign it a primary key, which means basically it's like the main identifier uh, for this table. And you can have other um, indexes and different um, attributes here, to distinguish those columns and it basically allows you to um, you know access the data more efficiently but we're not going to go over that um, too much so the first thing we'll do though is we'll say something like first name if we're taking or we'll say full name I'll show you a bunch of different column types full name so we're, we're gonna store their name and we'll do varchar uh, which basically is just saying like okay it's gonna be a certain amount of characters it's going to accept uh, a bunch of different symbols and things like that. It can pretty much take anything, um, but there obviously are other options for text. You know, you do have the text here. There's the char here, um, but it, it really just uh, depends on the use case. Now, the, the char here, though, is going to be like a specific length var char, though. It's basically um, going to allow you to just have variable amounts of text in there. So if you know something is like always going to be five letters long, no matter what, you could do like char five, for example, and that would make sense. But for something like full name, I usually use var char. Um, you might be tempted to do like 255 characters, just give it a lot of space. You don't really need to, you know, full name, I would just do 50 or something. That's pretty generous. Um, and it just means that nothing's ever going to be, you know, larger than that. And the cool thing about that is like, if you're coding, and you forget to actually limit the amount of text that someone can submit. If someone tries to submit like 5,000 words in the full name field, the database is only going to keep the first 50 characters, including spaces. 
Um, and so it's just a little extra layer of protection to make sure that even if you're not testing for length in your scripts and your code and program, um, the database isn't going to be able to be overloaded by data from a user that's trying to be a little malicious. Um, now for the default, we can say none here. And none basically means like there, there's nothing being put into that, that cell. Um, and this can be a little bit different on each database engine. I usually do null. Um, but basically like if you're doing none, the, the database is going to say, Hey, like I'm expecting data. If you don't give me the data, like what the hell am I supposed to do? If you do null, it means that you can basically insert a new row and you're not giving them the full name and it will just be a null field. So I don't want to go too much into what null means. Um, but essentially it's, it's just like a more declarative way of saying this information was not provided. It's empty, um, in a way. So now let's do like a phone number. So we'll say phone num for this, you know, we could do a varchar, we could do like 25 characters long if we wanted to, you know, if we want to include parentheses, plus symbols, um, and, and dashes, that would be the best way to do it. Um, but you could also do like a, a big int or something or an int here. So as you can see here, there's all these different ranges. So like this one right here, small int goes up to 32,767. Um, or like a tiny int goes up to um, 127. And so like what that means here is that if you did a tiny int, it's only going to be three numbers long or like negative one, two, three or positive one, two, three. You know, small int can only be, you know, these five characters long, you know, like 10,500. Um, medium int, like, so the, the point is, is what I'm saying though, is that if you are going to use an int kind of thing for a phone number, it doesn't really make sense because you're actually, you're, you're telling the database that you're accepting a large number, but there can be issues with that. Like what if you want to use international codes like 044 and you're using an int, it's going to get rid of that first zero. Um, and so basically what you do want to do is use varchar for a phone number, but you could also use text. Like if you know the format is always going to include, you know, the area code, and then it's going to be like this and then like that. Well, you could tell your code to strip this out, like strip out the dashes and you could know that it's always 10 characters long. So if we went down to char here, we could put the length as being 10 if we know it's always going to be 10. Um, but if you do want to have a little bit of flexibility there, like if they are including country codes or if you want to allow pluses and parentheses and stuff like that, then just do varchar 25 um, or something similar. So the next thing I want to show you is kind of like a creation time. And so what we can do is we can set this to be a timestamp and that's going to basically be like a, like a date kind of thing. And then it's going to be like a space and then it's going to be time. So it's like, it, you'll see it in a second, but that's the general format of timestamp. And the reason we're doing this is because for creation time, we're going to do the default as current timestamp. And that means that we don't have to worry about this column at all. When we insert a new row, it's automatically going to get the time and date and put it there so we can keep track um, of when that was created. Then we can also do something last edit time. And same thing, we're going to go down to timestamp here. And the default is going to be null. We're not going to insert anything when we create it. But then on the attributes over here, we can say that on update, we want to have a current timestamp. And that means that anytime this date is edited, it's going to update this column here with the current date and time. So if we had like a social network, we could say, okay, look at the creation time for when it was posted and then we can see when it was edited. So if we want to put like a little thing on the bottom, like, you know, edited three days ago um, to distinguish that it was edited from the original post, um, then we could definitely do that. And um, that's kind of interesting for social networks because like if, if someone creates, let's say a Facebook page and you like it, and then they change the image to something, you know, not safe for work. And then they change the name to something racist. Um, for example, your page is still going to be associated with that. So it's kind of like a little vulnerability gap in the sense that someone could post content and then edit it. And then if you've already liked it, it kind of looks like you support it. So if I share a post and then you look like give it a huge thumbs up or a love, and then I change it to say something awful about you, it looks like, or about someone, you know, you kind of look like an idiot because you're supporting something that's mean. And so this kind of tool or column here could be used to basically say, okay, if the person liked it before the last edit time, keep it liked. If they edited it after it was liked, maybe take the like off. Um, so it's, you know, it's got some use, but I usually use it just for showcasing when something was last edited 
or also just for data integrity. So if a client is like, hey, like what happened to this data? I didn't do this. I can be like, oh, actually you edited it, you know, three days later. Um, I'm not sure why, but I know that it was edited. And so that's kind of cool there. Um, we can also do things like statuses. So we can say like is active um, or we could say uh, is banned. Like if it's, for example, you know, a user and you want to mark if it's banned or not, then it's going to be zero or one. So a really small number we will do tiny int and uh, the value or sorry, the length will be one because it's zero or one. And then for the default, we can say as defined. And that allows us to actually put in anything that we want the default value to be. And so for this, I'll say zero. So like when I create a user, they're not banned. So is banned equals zero and zero pretty much equals false all the time. And one would equal true. So if it's one, it means that the user is banned by default. And so then we can update this status in the future to mark whether the user is banned or not. So then when they log in, we can say, okay, well, who's the user? Let's find them. And then we look and say, oh, is, are they banned? Like is, is banned equal to one? And if it is, don't let them log in. And if it's equal to zero, let them log in. Um, so that's kind of cool there. So we'll just save that. Um, and I'll put a link in the description, which basically shows you all the different ways to insert data um, with prepared queries. Uh, that's for PHP. But I'll do real quick, like if you want to insert something into this, we just do our query as insert into, and then the table name, so new table. And then we do the columns. So we're going to insert full name, phone num, and that's going to be it. And then we type out values. And then we do basically what we want. So I'll say William YouTube. And I'll put a space there as well. And then uh, for the phone, I'll just do that one I made before. And now when I press go, you're going to see that we have the defaults filled out. It's not edited. There is a creation time. Is band equals one or zero, I mean. If we want to make it equal one, watch this. I'll do one and let me refresh this. And now the last edit time showing that it was edited. And so that's kind of cool there. So I'll just null this out real quick. Oh, I can't null it because it's a uh, timestamp. That's fine. But the timestamp columns do have a little bit of finicky uh, things. And just to kind of show you real quick, I'll press copy here and I'll just do two. And then this I'll do 203. And then I'll just do a random parenthesis there just to show you that it does work. And press go. And so you can see, you know, our var chart is still allowing the different uh, symbols here. And we have the new name and everything like that. And also the ID column has auto incremented to two um, from one. Now, one last thing I'll show you is just like how to update for example if you wanted to um so we could say update new table set full name equal updated to this where id equals two and that's just a basic sql query and now we've updated row two here uh, to that so i will show you this if i want to i can basically go to like let's say a phone number and I can make this unique. Uh, or hold on, sorry, I gotta go to, to operations. Now here we go. I can go to my structure, and then I can click uh, click a uh, column, and I can make it unique. So now the phone number t uh, column is unique, and then I can make the full name unique if I wanted to. Um, the the point of this now is look at this, if I go over here and I try and copy this row, it's not gonna let me because the phone number is a duplicate of something that already exists. So that means that every phone number has to be unique. So I've just removed a three and changed it to a four. And now I'm pressing go and it allows it to be there. So we could do that if we have a user's table where basically you're verifying phone numbers and you know that you only want one user per phone number. Um, similarly, you could do something like this. You can add a column called email address. We'll do varchar 100 and the default will do none. Press save. Go to structure here. Oops, it's all highlighted. Click email address and we'll make this unique as well. And so now when you actually try this, 
it's not going to allow you to use the same email address because it's unique. And so you could do the same thing that I just said for phones, but for email addresses. So that's all pretty nifty. That's how you create a new database and set up a basic table. Um, in this case, we're doing it for users, but you could create something like this. And this really, I keep saying it'll be the last thing, but I do want to show one more thing. I'm going to say uh, social posts. It's going to be the name of the call or table. And I'm just going to show you how to kind of like build a relation uh, between this and the users table. So we'll just do ID again, auto increment, and the primary key for the ID. And then we'll just say post content. We'll say um, bar char. We'll just do like, uh, you know, 255 characters. That would be our max length for what they can share. Or, you know, maybe do something like Twitter. But normally this would be much larger. And then what we can do is just say user ID here. And we'll do int 11. That's pretty much going to allow for a very, very, very large user base um, for that. And so I'm not going to go into like the post time and edit time, but I just want to show you real quick. So now that we're in the social posts here, I'm just going to create uh, a few entries. And, and real quick, just to let you know, when, when you have an auto increment column like ID, you don't have to actually give it the ID. It will do that automatically um, for you. So for post content, I'll just say this is post content here. And then I'll say... 222. And then for this user here, I'm going to say one. And then for this one, I'm going to say two. So the post content belongs to two different users. And you can see that. So now let me just copy this real quick. Make some more content. So now we have two posts for user ID one and one post for user ID two. So two posts, one post. So what I can do now is I can basically say that I want to select um full name actually let's go to social posts so we'll do it from here so you can see okay what we want to do is we basically want to get the id the post content from social posts where user id equals one and if we do that we just get the posts made by user id one but this doesn't really help us if we also want to get information about the user. So what we can do is we can say social posts and then put the letter S or any letter or anything we want here. We'll do a capital S. And that basically means we can refer to the social post table with the abbreviation of S. And so over here, we can do S dot. And we're basically saying that we want the ID and social post content from this table because we're going to do something called join. So now we can say join new table on ID, or sorry, S dot user ID equals, and for new table, we'll just give it a abbreviation of U for users. So on S dot user ID equals U dot ID. And we're gonna get rid of this where statement. Now over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another comment. We're gonna say that we want the user, so U dot full name, And that's it. Now we press go, and we can see that we've ex we've basically gotten the post ID, the post content, and we've got the full name. So now with one query to SQL, we can basically show the person's name and the post content. Well, we could also do one step further. We could say where you is banned is equal to zero. Okay, and then what we can do here is go into our users. And let's ban user2. Now when we go here, user2 updated to this, it's going to be removed. And that allows us to also basically say we only want content from users that are not banned. And if they are banned, then we don't want to show that content. So now you've basically learned a few things. You've learned how to make a database. You've learned how to set up a user's table, a content table. You've learned how to access that data using join. and uh, I hope that's enough. Now check out the post or video that I made. The link is in the description that shows you all the different queries you can do for insert, selecting, updating, and deleting using PHP. 
and subscribe if you want to check out more videos like this because I'll be creating more as time goes on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.